The high cost of fuel oil is motivating many people to seek alternatives to non-renewables, but the high cost of solar is discouraging. Now we can have our cake and eat it too if we're willing to roll up our sleeves and get involved. Many of the materials needed for collecting and storing solar heat are commonly available and some of these materials may be obtained for little or nothing. There are a variety of do-it-yourself solar collector systems possible, but collecting solar heat is only the tip of the iceberg. Storing heat from a diffuse intermittent energy resource is a major concern. A heat storage tank may be made from 2x4s and plywood. A recycled gas hot water tank may be converted into a solar hot water tank. Carry barrels are commonly available and they may be used to store hot water. 55 gallon plastic drums may also be used to store solar heat but instead they are cluttering our landfills. It's my belief that these throwaway industrial barrels could be recycled to store heat, save oil, create jobs, and save the precious real estate that's now being destroyed by unregulated corporations. Plastic barrels are versatile. They may be joined in series to form a huge stratified heat storage chamber for home heating and domestic hot water, not to mention the many other uses for heat. We can make better use of our natural resources. It's just a matter of caring for our planet and all the miraculous things that make life possible. What you're looking at is a carry barrel. It's used to collect garden debris. But we can also use it to collect solar heat. By just uh, connecting a pipe from the collector, I'm just going to put this PVC pipe here. Now, use your imagination. Okay, so we have hot water from the collector entering the top of the tank. So, uh, the top of the tank will be quite high. Of course, you're going to get some circulation from the tank. And you'll connect a pump uh, towards the bottom of your tank, right here at this spigot, to return the coldest possible water to your collector to collect more heat. All right, so we're collecting heat, we're storing heat. Now the next problem is extracting heat. And that's a pretty simple process. All we will do is just use a, uh, we can use either this polyethylene tube. Uh, this is a 100 foot coil. And uh, so that'll be used to extract the heat from the water. You could also use PEX. Anyway, uh, this is uh, one method of storing and extracting heat from a solar collector or using the uh, carry barrel. The carry barrel itself will cost you maybe 40 bucks or so and the, the uh, tubing might cost you another 20 bucks. But it's still less expensive than a commercial uh, cl hot water tank that could run you as much as a thousand dollars. Anyway, uh, if, you're, if that's too much for you, if you shop around, you might be able to get one of these um, commercial uh, plastic tanks for free. Uh, a lot of companies, uh, they use the contents of the tank and then they just throw the tanks away. Uh, sometimes they actually pay people to take them. <laughs> I don't know if you're going to get that lucky. But uh, anyway, these are available if you look for them. Uh, it's a 55-gallon tank. It's rated at a 55-gallon tank. If you fill it right to the top, it's about 60 gallons. Anyway, uh, so what we want to do is uh, we're going to look at uh, a method that we can use uh, to uh, store heat for both uh, home heating and also for uh, domestic hot water. And we can actually do both employ both systems with the same tank setup, and uh, we'll be talking about that in just a little while. Uh, today we'd we'll like to talk about storing solar heat. Uh, as you know, commercial 
solar hot water tanks sell for about a thousand dollars and if you want several solar hot water tanks they'll sell for several thousand dollars and this is one of the reasons that a lot of people don't get involved with renewable energy it has to do with cost as a matter of fact this is the main reason so what we want to do today is we want to talk about ways uh, you can avoid the initial costs. Now these uh, tanks might not look that glamorous to you right now. I've been using them for about three years. They have a little paint on them and so on. And I've already made some modifications so that we can use them to store heat. Uh, they come from uh, the companies. Now th these come from the DVM, not the Department of Motor Vehicles Bureau, but a dairy processing company. Anyway, uh, they, they, they don't put milk in them. There's certain chemicals that they, additives that they uh, put in the milk. Anyway, when they're done with the tanks, they throw them out. So if you're around, uh, when they're throwing them out, you can get them for uh, little or nothing, usually nothing. Uh, if, you get, if you wait a little too long, they might go uh, to a landfill. So sometimes you can pick them up in landfills. Anyway. Oh, so these are 55 gallon drums, uh, uh, and the mark goes up to 55. Actually, if you fill them right to the top, it's about 60 gallon. Um, so they come sealed like this. Uh, they have a, 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 a cap that goes on this uh, fitting. Some people call it a bone hole. I, I'm not sure what you call it. And there's another fitting that comes with it, and this, this has a pipe fitting. And uh, a two, for a two-inch pipe fitting, so you can adapt this uh, for your own special purposes. So this fitting we can use, and I'm going to make use of this one. But we need another hole, and uh, this hole uh, inside this hole we're putting a two-inch rubber boot. Okay, and you'll see how that works in a moment. Okay, so this is a tank we want to use to store our hot water. So the first thing we're going to need to do is uh, collect the hot water from the collector. So that's where that's what this fitting is for. So the hot water from the collector will come in here, okay, and it will enter the top of the tank. Uh, so the water on the top of the tank will be hot and the water at the bottom of the tank will be cold. So we want to pump the cold water, the coldest water possible, back to the collector. And that's going to be on the bottom of the tank. Now the question is, how do we get the cold water on the bottom of the tank to be pumped uh, back to the collector? Well, we have to get to it somehow. Um, we do that by using something known as a dip pipe. Uh, this is a this is a dip pipe. You see, it's just a, a two-inch piece of PVC. It has a few slits cut on the bottom. In case you push it down all the way, you still want water to enter your your pipe. All right. Now the only problem is this fitting is pretty tight. So in order to get it to fit in here, we're going to have to lubricate it a little. So I have this soap solution here. Bear with me. So I just paint a little soap solution on it. You can also use mineral oil if you like. The problem with the soap solution is that it dries out and then you have to do it again. Also, you might get bubbles in your system. I don't think it's going to matter too much, but for demonstration purposes, this is fine. All right, so we just slide this through our rubber boot. As long as it's well lubricated, it should go right in. There we go. So there's our, our dip tube, and it presses against the sides of the rubber boot to make a watertight seal. Okay? That's what makes, makes it uh, watertight, the, the pressure of the PVC against the outside of the rubber boot, and that presses against the, the hole that we, we drill in it. All right, so now if we wanted to, we could take this cold water and send this directly back to the collector. But uh, we probably want to store a little more heat than just this. We can use, 
how we can use more than one tank. As a matter of fact, if you're going to use this system uh, for domestic hot water, you're probably going to want to use a lot of tanks, maybe uh, a dozen or, or more uh, tanks. But what we can do is, uh, I, I'm just going to demonstrate two tanks right now. So we're connecting, uh, we're taking the cold water from this, the first tank, and we're siphoning that cold water off and putting it into our next tank. So this is going to enter the top of the next tank, and then, uh, and so on, down the line. We, we'll repeat this uh, process, take the hot water from this tank, I'm sorry, take the cold water, <laughs> another dip tube here, take the cold water from this tank, and uh, bring that into the, the following tank. This is a method of stratification uh, using uh, multiple tanks. Okay, we have the hot water from our collector entering the top of our first 55-gallon tank through this 2-inch uh, PVC pipe. Okay, so this kind of, the hot water is entering from the top. We're going to siphon the coldest water from this tank with a dip tube and connect this to the next tank. And the next tank, the, the coldest water from the next tank will enter the top of the adjacent tank and then we'll connect that to, instead of this, uh, we'll connect another uh, dip tube to siphon the coldest water from this tank to the next tank and so on. So this is a, a matter of heat stratification uh, and it's designed to return the coldest possible water to the collector to get the maximum heat exchange. Alright, so that all should make sense. Now the, this uh, represents our last tank right here. Actually it's our second tank, but I want you to assume that we have a dozen tanks all connected in series. And this is our very last tank. Uh, so we want to connect the pump to the lowest part on this tank. So the first thing we'll have to do is install a rubber boot. Now I've used this rubber boot for about three years and it's still, it's a little ratty, but it still uh, forms a waterproof seal. So we install it inside. Oh, first I just want to show you. So in order to make this hole, we'll use a circular saw like this. Uh, this is about uh, two and a half inch uh, circular saw. Okay. So that will accommodate the rubber boot. Just press that in like this. Okay, now this on it by itself is not going to form a waterproof seal. The waterproof seal takes place because of the pressure that's applied to the inside of the rubber boot, and that presses against the, the hole that's drilled. Okay, be sure to lubricate this good, otherwise you won't be able to press it in. It fits really tight, and that's where your waterproof seal comes from. So we connect our pump to this, and this pumps the coldest water from our last tank back to our collector. Okay, uh, so this is great just the way it is for uh, heating your house. But suppose besides heating your house, you also want to collect uh, heat for your domestic hot water system. In that case, if you have enough tanks, you can place the tanks on a cement slab and embed copper tubes underneath. We no longer have to rely on secondhand heat from non-renewable resources. Instead, we can get all the heat we need directly from the sun. Recycling for solar is sometimes known as the double green method of energy conservation because it uses waste materials to gather renewable energy and create jobs in the process. We have many alternatives available and we may find it difficult to choose between them, but most people will agree that we can no longer travel down this dead-end street. I hope this series on recycling for solar sheds some light on the problems and the possible solutions we'll be dealing with in the coming years.